Good afternoon. I've got 2 o'clock, so we're going to start the webinar. This is Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center, and we are so very pleased to have Katherine Robertson with us this afternoon to provide you a webinar on the TIMS system. It's a great tool that you can use in your daily work, and Katherine does an excellent job with these webinars. So. Just a couple of quick housekeeping items, and then we're going to get rolling with Catherine's presentation. On your screen, you will notice, hopefully, a conversation panel on the bottom left-hand corner. If you don't see this, then you should at least see a circle with a, like a little text or thought bubble in it. Push that button if you're not seeing the conversation panel, and then it should appear for you. That's the chat pod, and we would ask that during the actual presentation, you please enter questions you have for Catherine in that chat pod. I will read those off to her as they come in or, or as there's an appropriate moment for me to break into the presentation for her to answer your questions. At the end of the presentation, we will work to unmute the phone lines so you can also ask questions um, just in general via the audio. But during the presentation, we try to keep the phone lines muted so we can have a, a noise-free background for everyone to enjoy the presentation in. So with out any other housekeeping items on our list, we're going to go ahead and move into the presentation. Catherine, are you ready? Yeah, let me just Great. unmute. Oh, and I <laughs> forgot to warn them. I'm sure there was one more thing. I, and it, it's a warning of sorts, but also just, I think, more of an FYI. We are attempting to record the webinar. And I don't want that to dampen your enthusiasm for asking questions. I still want you to ask them, but I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that we were attempting to record it. And if we are successful, um, we will go ahead and send the link out after the webinar is completed to everyone. So, all right, there you go. All Thank yours, you, Catherine. Victoria. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, let's start sharing. How's that look? Looks good to me. Okay, so thank you for hosting us, Victoria. Um, as she said, I'm Katherine Robertson with ODOT's Office of Technical Services. And today we're gonna look at TIMS, our Transportation Information Mapping System. You can think of TIMS as a publication platform where we bring together spatial data that's maintained by various offices throughout ODOT, um, as well as some data that's published from, from other agencies. Our goal with TIMS is to provide one easy to use location for accessing the most current transportation related data, um, or as the website says, provide better data to help you make better decisions. So we're currently looking at the TIMS homepage. Uh, let's cover a couple of ways that you can get to this homepage. Um, of course, there's a URL, gis.dot.state.oh.us slash TIMS. No one wants to remember that. Um, so if you are external to ODOT, ODOT's homepage has a link about halfway down under Maps and References. Uh, if you are an ODOT employee, the portal page will have a link at the top. Um, or anyone can just type into your search engine, um, ODOT TIMS, and it should be the first thing that comes up. Of course, once you're here, you can set a bookmark and then you'll never forget this. Uh, okay, let's go over a few things on this homepage. Um, down at the bottom, we'll have some links and the help link. We'll open a PDF user guide uh, that, that is a good reference um, and everything that we cover today should also be in this PDF guide. We have the contact link provides this email address. Um, any emails sent to this address go to the inbox of the entire TIM support team. So it really is the best way um, to contact us. And um, someone should get back to you fairly shortly. It, you can send um, questions about any of the data if you find any discrepancies, if there are any technical issues, or um, if you want to suggest something you'd like to see added to TIMS. All of those are welcome at that email address. Um, a final link here at the bottom is news. 
and we have links to upcoming training classes. Uh, if after today you think you'd like to sit through an in-person training course, you can find one that's near you and click the link and register through LTAP. Now you'll notice uh, the title bar has um, remained the same. We have some links on the title bar. Uh, the ODOT Zephyr gets you to that external ODOT page. And this uh, TIMS logo takes you back to the TIMS homepage. And then um, the search by PID is a shortcut to this project search page, which is one of seven sections um, of the site. So, so we'll look at that um, search by PID box in a minute. But first, I want to just give a quick overview of what each of these sections are. And then we'll dive in and explore each one. OK, so our project search page, um, it provides access to ODOT's Ellis project database um, in table form and provides a lot of tools for, for filtering down that data. If you enter a PID um, into the shortcut box, it'll bring you directly to this page. And you'll see uh, when I'm away from the home page, I have each of these links across the title bar, so it's easy to navigate. Um, throughout the site, wherever you are. Our create a map page, that's our, that's our GIS um, mapping page where you can display any of the data sets and um, it includes a lot of tools for navigating and filtering and querying. And this is where we'll spend most of our time today. This is where most of the functionality exists. Um, but we'll go to the data downloads page. All of the assets that we link to here in TIMS, uh, we make available to download the complete data set in a couple of different formats, Excel, KMZ, Shapefile, uh, or, or GeoDatabase. You just select uh, any that you want and then export and choose your format. We have standard PDF maps. Um, and these are some pre-configured map layouts for generating a quick PDF plan. Um, and they're all focused around project data. Uh, map viewers. Uh, each of these map viewers has the same functionality of the create a map. So once we go through the create a map, um, you'll be able to navigate through any of these. The only difference is uh, the content in each of these viewers is focused for a specific office or workflow. And then we have our data glossary. Um, and this is a reference for, for all the data. Uh, you can search for the data set and then see all the fields um, as well as some other links. So we will spend some time and use this as our reference throughout today. Finally, back on the home page, we have the uh, crash data search, the GCAT. And this is a, um, a secured portal for our crash data. And you can get training specifically for this section. I believe there was one earlier today. So they, they also have um, regular uh, webinars scheduled for that. There is a pared down version of crash data um, available to the public, and we have that in the Create a Map page, so you will see that later today. Okay, so we're going to dive into the project search page, and um, we'll start with the shortcut search by PID box. Um, you can see it's remembering some of the PIDs that I had searched recently, but you can type in your PID as your project ID. Enter, and you'll see that it brought me to this project information page, um, which has uh, all the attributes that we publish for projects. And I want to show you a difference. Um, if I search a different PID, you'll see that it brought me to this, this page, and you'll see uh, when the results table loads, that is because I have two separate records. Um, and if I clicked details on one of those records, it brings me back to this project information page. Uh, so that's just some behavior to note. Um, but let's start, let's clear out and start directly at the project search page as it would load uh, the first time you visit. And you can see in the results table, um, 
it has loaded all of the projects that we have in our database, uh, 59,542 today. This data set is updated daily. Uh, and I do always like to take a minute and, and read the text at the top of the page. It gives some information about um, what projects are, are pulled in and published through TIMS. So we'll just read that together. Find transportation projects from ODOT's project database. This search includes projects with one, funding categories of Ellis Multilane Major Rehab, STIP, Major Bridge, Safety HSP, Safety SRTS, Local Programs, and Track. Two, uh, the projects are completed, current or future projects with committed funding. Committed funding is the key word there. And three, they have a valid work location. If there is not a location, we can't map it so it's, it's um, probably not going to show. The information provided here are overview of project information and not a comprehensive view of the entire project database. Um, project information available in TIMS is updated on a nightly, nightly basis, and uh, PIDs with multiple work locations will result in multiple records. So we, we saw that um, final statement when we looked at two different PIDs and how um, it can have just one record resulting or multiple records. And that's usually multiple records. There's going to be one for each location in the field. So now we have all of these filter tools um, for diving down through all of these records. Uh, let's step back just one second, go over some of the functionality for this results table. Um, you can see by default, I'm only going to see five records per page, and that's to keep it easy to navigate. Um, but you can extend that to view more records at a time. We're going to keep it at five so that you guys can see the full page. Um, you can click any of the category, uh, the, the field titles, to sort on that field. And um, the uh, magnifying glass to the left of each record is how you get to that project information page. And from here, you can see um, all the attributes uh, for funding and locations, and there are links to project plans. Not every project will have its plans published through the system, um, so you just have to click the URL and see. But if there are plans, this is, this is how it will look. And from here, um, you can navigate through digital paper. This is all managed by ODOT's Office of Contracts. Okay, um, from this page, you can click the view in Ellis. Now Ellis is our project database, the full database, and what we link to here is Ellis Proj, uh, which is not the full application, but it does, uh, it does provide more information than we publish directly on the TIMS page. And we have the view in map. So this is going to take you to the create a map page and zoom to the location of that project. Um, you'll see uh, something that we'll go back to a lot today is um, this results layer for our project line and the information that's populated into the results table of the create a map page. So just note that something we're going to talk about a lot more. And we're going to go back twice to the project search page. and use some of these filter tools to narrow down and find specific projects. So it's going to default to recorded location. Um, some jobs will, will span multiple counties, um, so one, P, one PID will have multiple work locations, um, but they'll all have a recorded location, so it defaults to that. And um, another thing that you'll notice throughout the site is uh, tooltips. When you see the question mark icon, you can hover over that. So it's telling us District 13 represents statewide projects. So ODOT has 12 districts, but we can select District 13. And you'll see um, that it narrowed it down to 52 uh, statewide projects. But for now, let's choose District 2. And then our county list. Um, 
we're going to choose Lucas County. And you'll note that this has filtered down to the counties within District 2. Now our PID list has also filtered down, um, but that's going to be a very long, very long list. And uh, again, you could also sort on the PID field. That's pretty fast. But we want to narrow down even more, so we're going to come to the uh, other side of the filters and choose calendar year. And let's search this calendar year, 2019 to 2019. Okay, so right now what we're seeing is uh, 45 entries um, and 29, for 2019 in Lucas County. And we can take that down even more um, by filtering on the primary work category. So let's choose bridge repairs. And we'll see we have two entries. Um, but you'll note that there are quite a few work categories with bridge um, in the in the term. So we want to see everything related to bridges. And in order to do that, we can take advantage. I just backspace to clear that out. Uh, we can take advantage of this search box down here in the results table. And you can type in bridge. It will automatically filter. And so now we're seeing um, bridge maintenance as well as uh, bridge repair and bridge replacement. And we can use the search box to search any of the fields. Um, it has some limitations in that it searches all of the fields. So say we wanted to narrow down uh, and see projects by Route 475. If I just type 475, uh, you'll see that it's going to give me records where 475 occurs somewhere within the PID. Um, but our route field, you'll notice, is in a five-digit format with leading zeros. So knowing that, we can take advantage of that and use that format to narrow down. And now we're seeing um, projects in Lucas County um, on Route 475 in 2019. Okay, um, we can clear these filters. We can just remove this section or this section. Um, oh, before I did that, I was going to show you here. Keep that 475 filter. So we have 199 entries. And if we wanted to export um, information for that project, um, you'll see that these buttons are currently disabled. So what you have to do is you use the filter tools to narrow down, find the project you're looking for. And um, let's then manually select. So click one and then click the other. You don't have to hold the control key down. And now that I have these records selected, um, I'm able to export. So, okay, so that's another functionality you'll want to note as we move throughout the site is um, we clicked export, it took a second to generate that file, and now the download button has been activated. So if I click download, um, it will download to whatever you have set up on your computer in a zip file. And I'd like to take a minute to show you what you get with this project data. Uh, helps you understand since the project data is one of the largest databases and it's um, you know the basis of everything we're doing here at ODOT. You'll see you have this um, project search export master table, and then we have a um, LS, it has LN for line. And I have an example, I noted an example that I want to focus in on to show you what you get. Let's see. I'm going to do I think it was that 75734. Oh, I know. Okay. Back up just one second. District 3. I changed my plan at the last minute here. In Erie County in 2019, gives us a smaller subset. And you'll see that I still have that value in my search box. I'm going to clear that. Now, bridge. 
pages. All right, now I'm synced back up with, uh, with my plan. <laughs> I had it all worked out. It's going to be the perfect workflow, but we'll still show the functionality. Um, basically, what I wanted to point out is um, how the locations are generated uh, with these three fields. There's route, uh, begin log, CTL, county township log, um, and an end value. And you'll see I, I click to sort, and this is this doesn't have a route value and it's zero for both logs so i'm not going to be able to map that project um, and then i have um, a valid route and a beginning log point but no end log point so that's going to come through as a point um, just just one log point along the road and then if i have an end or a beginning and an end that's going to come through on the map as a line and we'll see that as we go through uh, more examples. And what I'd wanted to show you in the project search page is that um, you'll get all of the records in the master table with um, all the project information that you see on the project information page. And then you will also get, um, get it divided out by geometry. So you'll get line, if there are, is a begin and an end log point and um, point if there is just the beginning log point. So that's just understanding um, how we're mapping this information that we get from the project database. Okay, um, and again, we have the view and map button. You wanna select one of the records and that takes you to the create a map page. I, we saw that briefly. Um, and just like we saw in the spreadsheet, you'll see um, that it's going to populate all of this information. And that's strange that it gave me three records. So let's clear out, start fresh from the Tim's page. Okay, there we go. So when you click a record in the results table, it should, should give you just that record. And I find this a lot in the webinars, especially as I'm preparing for them. I've filled my cache um, with all of these different searches and sometimes the website might seem to act a little funny and the best thing to do there is just reset uh, reset your browser browser in chrome it's this um little reload this page button at the top i believe in internet explorer it's on the top right of the address bar um, and this results layer you'll see um, there's different things that we can do with that. If I had the points and lines, I could toggle them off and on. But I think let's, now that we're here on the create a map page, let's um, start fresh with that and go over how to navigate around this page. So we have um, the tools pane on the left and the results table on the bottom. And each of those panes can be resized by clicking the, uh, the gray bars and dragging. You can hide each pane uh, by clicking the arrow and then just click it again to bring it back. And then we have um, the toolbar along the left pane and we're gonna step through all the functionality in each of these categories. Uh, but you'll note that it always defaults to um, set visible layers, uh, which is this right here where you can expand the categories of all the layers we publish through Tim's and uh, we'll spend some time looking at those. Um, then navigating in the map window is just like navigating through Google Maps. You can use your mouse to zoom in, your middle mouse button. Um, we have the buttons here to zoom in and out. And uh, the home button will get you back to that full extent. 
Uh, we also have a couple of base maps that you can choose from. Um, so the ones, uh, the base maps at the top are third party base maps. We just um, point to them. They're managed by third parties. Uh, streets, I believe, is what we're looking at now, similar to Google Street. Um, a hybrid will give you satellite with uh, labels as you zoom in. Dark gray is a different option if you're um, wanting to just have a plain background. US topo can give you some topography of the area. Uh, National Geographic is pretty. Okay, and then um, we have our ODOT base map, which is very similar to the streets base map, um, but it's it's maintained by us here. And then OSIP, Ohio Statewide Imagery Program. Um, there are two uh, levels of, of two phases published right now, and uh, I always recommend just using best available. It will automatically uh, choose the best available for that area, so you don't have to think about it. And then one thing I know, want to note about base maps is, um, especially with the imagery, if you zoom out to a full extent, uh, that's going to be too much information for Tim's to load. And I can show you an example of that by clicking the home page. Um, and also the base map that you have selected is going to be saved in your browser settings. So if I was looking at an area, uh, zoomed in really far, looking at OSIP imagery, and then I closed down my browser and came back the next day and went to open Tim's, and all I saw was this white screen and it wouldn't load, the first thing to check um, is your base map. Uh, it's going to remember the last one that you had used. So if you switch back to streets and it draws, um, then you'll know that was the case. Okay, let's look around. Let's um, start going through the layers, assets, um, and expand the category, and then you'll see the list of layers, and just click any of them to draw on the map. So our ODOT facilities. When you turn a layer on, you can switch over to the legend tab and see what each symbol represents. Um, we also have other reference layers in here like uh, railroad crossings. And again, I turned on a layer so it's going to show up in my dynamic legend now. Um, and in the assets category, we have a lot of the ODOT managed assets, um, especially those that are being collected through our collector program, if anyone is involved in that. Um, once there is enough inventory published through the collector program, we um, bring it in and, and share that publication through TIMS. So um, outfalls, I believe, is an example of that. Um, our newest one is uh, signs and sign supports. Now note um, that I, when I clicked outfalls, uh, it drew on the map, but when I clicked sign and sign supports, nothing drew. Uh, and that's because it's a very large data set, so we have a draw extent set. And as you zoom in, you'll see them drawing now, and as you zoom in even further, you'll see labels. Um, that is also the case with our bridge data set. I see nothing drew, but as I zoom in, there's all of the bridges. Of course, there are many, and then even further, those are going to be labeled by the structure file number. Okay, so let's get a, a quick view of a couple of assets in each of these categories. In boundaries, we have um, municipal boundaries, as well as um, the electric service areas is a good reference, and planning organizations. Um, environmental layers include a lot of restrictions uh, due to environmental regulation. So herbicide restriction, you can see it drew the lines on the map, as well as noise measurements and historic bridge inventory. And as I click things on again, I'll show you how the dynamic legend updates. Now projects. Um, 
the project points and project lines that you should understand that now because we've already reviewed how we're getting that geometry based on um, those log points that are in the project database. So just to the nature of GIS, those are split out by their geometry type. And you can turn on that full database. Um, or we have it filtered out uh, in a couple of meaningful ways. So you can view just fiscal years by point or line. Um, district work plans and current projects. Current projects are going to be based on today's date uh, plus or, or today's date compared to the begin and end construct construction dates that are filed in Ellis. Okay, and then our roadway information. Um, our, this road inventory layer, this is the backbone. Um, this is the geometry that all these other assets are, are mapped to. And when you turn it on here, you, we're viewing it by um, route type. You can view that same information as by functional class. You can see in the legend that breaks down. And we also have um, the road inventory filtered out by some meaningful attributes like speed zones, traffic counts, and then some of the um, point features that go along with that, like the stations where traffic counts are collected. Okay. Um, strategic transportation system. These are just some reference layers um, you can view. Amtrak railways, uh, designated bike routes. I believe this is a, a layer that's um, undergoing a lot of improvement right now. It's really growing and they're, they're uh, keeping that up to date. So that's something to watch. And finally, safety is where we publish that pared down um, crash data that can be available to the public. All personally identifiable information has been removed. And because it's such a large database, we split it out by year and we always show um, the three previous years. So right now, 2017 through 15. And then um, when the 2018 data is cleaned up and published, we'll have 2018 through 16. And again, that's a large data set, so when you first turn it on, you won't see the records. There we go. Okay, so let's uh, leave this crash data on for a minute. And uh, let's choose a couple of data sets that we'll focus on today. So we'll keep crash on. And then under roadway information, let's do snow and ice priority. I think that's uh, applicable this time of year for sure. And let, for projects, let's keep that narrowed down to project current project lines. And in assets, let's keep bridge turned on uh, as long as we're zoomed in far that will be manageable. So we've chosen the information that we want to view. Uh, now let's look at some tools to zoom into an area of the map uh, where we want to see this information. And for that, we're going to the second tool on the toolbar, Find Locations. And when you expand that, you'll see we have a couple of areas or a couple of ways to search. Um, let's start at the bottom with Find Area. And this is just going to search for, for a boundary polygon, um, county, if we wanted to do And um, that's another behavior that you'll see throughout the website. When there's a pick list, you can also just start typing. And it will filter that list for you. OK. And then we have find by log point. Um, now, it's not often that you're going to have a log point that um, someone's giving you that value and that's what you're searching on. But this tool is also really useful for reporting a log point. And to do that, you use this click on map button. 
and you want to click on a place on the roadway. And note that even though I don't have the full road inventory layer turned on, I clicked on that geometry and it knows underlying where that is, so it's still reported. It gives me the NLF ID and the county log number for that point. You can also use this tool um, to, report, to see what log points are available for a certain route. So um, if we want to look at... Interstate Route 280. You'll see right here, it's giving me a, a shortcut. Um, I know that in Lucas County, that route goes uh, from 0 to 5.75. So the direction that all of these log points will go at the cardinal direction is going to be from west to east or south to north. So the 0 log point will be the western border um, in that county. And if we type a log point within those values, say 3.53, it will zoom to that area. Okay, a similar tool is the find by lat long. If you have uh, coordinates, you can type them in, but this tool is also really useful for reporting coordinates. Again, with the click on map, tool activated. You can click anywhere. You'll see the flag drop and it will give you the lat long. You can also switch that format um, back and forth between degrees, minutes, seconds or decimal degrees. And then our final find location tool is um, find address or intersection. So you'll see that this defaults to the address of um, ODOT Central Office, where I am sitting today, and you can clear that out. It's just to give you an idea of um, what kind of information to type in, just as if you were searching on, on Google Maps. Um, it is pretty good about finding intersections, so say to get to this location we're already looking, I could do Interstate 280 and State Route I believe that's 65. Uh, I'm going to click find to show you what will happen. It, it wants more information. So I'm going to give it the city. Toledo. Okay. And note, um, when I did that search, it generated a results layer. So I have a record populated in my results table. And if I switch back over to my layers tab, you'll see that I have um, several new, two new layers here in the results. And uh, that's just something to keep in mind as housekeeping. As you go through and you're doing searches, it's generating these results layers. Um, those, are those are stored temporarily on the server. Once you navigate away from Tim's, um, those are all deleted. But in your one session, if you build up a lot of those, um, it can get confusing. So it's just Note that they're being generated, that they're there. You can turn them off or remove them. And even with removing them, I find that it kind of um, clogs up the, the browser memory. So after a while, it may act funny and I'll, and I'll reset, reset the page. OK, so here we are at this area, and we're viewing the information. Um, now let's get some, let's look at the attributes for individual features that we're looking at. And I'm wondering if I, let's take one second to look at the data glossary. Um, I had mentioned that we'll use that as a reference throughout today. So I'm going to right click data glossary, open link in new tab so that I can have both my map and the data glossary up at the same time and we can toggle back and forth. Um, so we, we chose some layers to focus on today, and let's see what kind of information we can get um, from the data glossary. So uh, like I had mentioned with another drop-down list, you can start typing. So we know we have snow and ice priority routes on. And you'll see here it's going to list every field that we have published. 
And um, just like other results tables, you can choose the number of records that you view at a time. We'll do five just to make the, the page uh, simple for you guys today. And um, we try to add a meaningful description uh, to each of the fields. Again, we're the publication portal, so we're not actually responsible for, for the information published in these layers. That's going to be the various offices throughout ODOT. We do our best to get a meaningful description here. The uh, question mark that's going to show um, to the left of every record, this is going to give you information about the entire data set actually. So snow and ice priorities, um, we'll get a description and we'll see the last time that it was refreshed. And if we switch and uh, look at the bridge, you will see we have 144 uh, attributes published for this. So it's a it's a very large data set, and we'll see later as we try to get some information. Um, um, but again, we try to give a description of what each field represents, especially with bridge inventory. You'll see a lot of codes, and um, Again, we have the information about the data set. We can see that this one is updated daily. And this time for this data set, we have the second link, view additional information, activated. And I didn't want to lose my page, so I did right click, open a new tab. You'll see that it takes me to the data owner, the Office of Structural Engineering. Um, they're responsible for, for the information that's published in that data set. Um, we are a point of contact. If you find any issues, definitely contact us through that um, email address we looked at earlier, and we can act as liaison between all the different offices. Um, now let's look at um, projects. Say if I'm looking for projects, one thing to note is it's not called projects here in the data glossary. In our database, it's Ellis, and we have it divided by lines and points. So that's something to note. Not a lot of description about, about the fields in Ellis anyways. Okay, back to our create a map page. Um, now we're going to use the second, the third tool on the toolbar, identify features. And when you click that, it activates the tool. So if I move my cursor over to the map, um, I'll see the crosshairs now, and I click anywhere in the map. Um, you'll see it drew this this box, this graphic box, and any features that I have turned on that intersect that box are going to return over here in my results layer. And um, you'll see I found um, the bridge inventory layer, uh, two features intersected. And I can scroll down and see all of the fields for that one bridge feature. Um, if I zoom out a little more to show you the behavior, when I click, let's try right here, it might get a lot. I'm zoomed out more, that box is going to catch more features. So in my results layer, you'll see again, I have bridges, but I also have records in snow and ice priority and uh, some crash records. In that one area, there were 27 crash records, so I could toggle through all of them and see that information. Okay, um, let's highlight uh, some good layers that have hyperlinks available in the attribute table that we can access from this identify pane. So I'm going to switch back to um, my layers tab and just to clear all this out to keep us fresh since we're going back and forth I'm going to just reset this page. There we go. And under my assets category I want to highlight under drain There it is. And design supports. Uh, they're a large data set, so I do want to get back to that. State Route 280 and State Route 65. Yeah. Now 
I could have just clicked the clear button. That would have saved me a second, but that's okay. It's pretty quick. Now with these different uh, layers enabled, when I, oh yeah, use my identify tool on uh, this area, you see it returned um, for sign features. And if I scroll all the way down, I will see links to photos that are collected um, as part of the collector program. Very well named collector because they're collecting. If I click that, it's going to open a new tab. And in signs, you can see a lot of these features aren't going to have um, a picture associated. That hyperlink is generated, um, whether there's a picture or not. So you just have to click it and see. If there is no, if there is no picture, no photo attached, um, this is what you'll find. But one of our older data sets, the underdrain outlets, I know there are some down here. There we go. Chances are we will have a photo. There we go. So that's a good reference to note. OK. Uh, that pretty much sums up what we can do with our identify tool. And again, that's, that's to give you all the attributes for one feature at a time. If we want to report all of these attributes for multiple features, um, we would populate them into our results table down here. And we have some different tools um, to do that. We're going to skip over this fourth tool. Uh, which is the gear symbol. We'll come back to that in a minute. And we're going to go to this filter. It has the funnel because we're funneling down the data. Um, and we'll go through the tools for filtering out our data. OK, let's start with um, filtering by graphic. And let's get back in to a small area. Now, the way that this tool is going to work um, is you choose your layer from the layers that you have enabled or set to visible. And again, note that we've done some searches. I searched for an address. It created a results layer. So that's also going to show up in there. Um, just something to note. And let's do sign supports. Let's choose that one. And we're going to uh, draw a point first. So to activate that, I'm going to click the draw button. And then you'll see the cursor change in the map. Uh, click anywhere to place that point. And now I want to create a buffer around that point. So I'm going to add a distance, let's say 500 meters, and then click the buffer button. If you want to modify that, um, you can just use this button to clear graphic. It looks like we need to update that. Okay. And again, you have to click. And this time, let's do 200. There you go. Now when I click Search, it's going to return all of those sign support uh, features that fall within that graphic that I just drew. And we can expand our results table to see uh, those 12 entries. And just like the other results table, I'm limiting that to five right now, and or to 10. Let's put it down to five so that we can minimize that a little bit. Um, just like the results table on the project search page, I can um, sort on any field. The question mark next to each uh, field name We'll do a little pop-up that links to the data glossary. Um, you know, it's not the smartest tool, so it's going to it's going to report every time that field name exists um, for all the databases. So obviously, county is it going to be in most of our data sets, uh, but something that's specific would be support style. It's just going to be for these sign supports, so that's useful there. 
to the left, we have a zoom tool. It will zoom into that one individual feature if I select it. So um, it zoomed out pretty far. I was already zoomed in. If I want to zoom to all of the results, it would be this. So I'm wondering if I have multiple selected. Well, you can note that um, as I click a record, it highlights it both in the table and um, on the map. Okay, and again, the results table has the search box functionality. So um, maybe the most common use is to take advantage of being able to search those routes. Brought me down to seven entries. And you can also toggle what columns. Um, if you know you only want to see, say for this, uh, I only want to see that support style. Guess what I should have done here, toggle all. Then go find that field and turn that one field on. There it is. And you can see that it's changed automatically. I'm going to go ahead and close this out because I think we'll uh, move away from, from this data set for now. So I think it's OK that I'm, I'm just going to leave those. Uh, and this setting will not be saved in your browser. So if you come back another day and look at this um, sign support inventory, you will see all of the fields. Um, Let's look at other ways to populate this results table with these filter tools. And the second one is filter by geography. So again, you'll see I'm, I'm building up some results layers here, but what I really care about is, are um, the asset features that I have set to visible. And so we're going to view under drain outlets. We're going to just choose a county. You'll see when I pick that county, it zoomed out to that level. And when I click search, it will populate my results with all the under drain outlets um, within Lucas County. You'll see I have 404. Note that in the map, those 404 records are all highlighted, but I'm still seeing all of the other records as well. So. Um, another thing that you can do is go back to your Layers tab and you'll want to turn off the overall or the main layer and then all I'm seeing are my results query, my result query. Um, we don't really have the ability to control the symbols that you're using. Um, so that's something to note, but you can do meaningful queries and then print, which we'll, we'll look at here in a minute, because we have one more filter tool. And you'll note that I have um, turned off all of my layers, but these results queries, because they're building up, I'm going to reset the map again. All right, and we will do, go back to our, yeah, current projects. And snow and ice priorities. And as you resize these panes, uh, you can see uh, I'll make it larger, makes it easier to read, or I can just hover over each um, layer and see the full name. All right, so uh, let's repeat that geography just to get us back to Lucas County. And I'm not going to click search because it will just generate another um, results table. What I really want now is to show the filter by attributes. Okay. 
I did plan an example and it was based on the sign supports. So let's turn that back on as well. And I can navigate throughout all of the different features in the toolbar without resetting my map. But if I navigate away um, from this create a map page or if I reset my browser, then um, I will have to zoom back into that area. So I'm sure you guys have seen that behavior. Catherine, it's Victoria. I just want to let you know we've only got about five minutes left. Oh, wow. And have I been talking that much? <laughs> <laughs> You've done a great job with this webinar, but yeah, we've got five minutes left. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat pod. Okay, well, I do want to get through this last feature tool because it is the most powerful tool. Um, and then we'll just quickly look at the last two. So let's turn on our sign supports and get to this filter by attributes. Um, and now we looked at support style earlier. So if I want to find that field, support style, we're building a query. You can see that it's going to give me um, all of those values. So let's choose wood. Now, if I click search now, it's going to search the entire database throughout the state of Ohio. Um, but we have the counties on almost every data set. So I can add that. I clicked add filter and um, choose county is Lucas. Okay, now we have all of the wood um, sign supports in Lucas County in our results table. And um, I could even do, uh, I could add, I could add unlimited filters, I believe, through, through any of the fields. Um, oh, I had so many scenarios I wanted to go through. So quickly, I'll just note that um, you can add your own reference layers if you have a shape file. You can import that to view in your browser setting, and that will show up if you generate a PDF. Um, but if you navigate away from your session, that's, that's not going to be saved. And um, just as a quick example, um, we did look at the standard PDFs just, just briefly. Um, so if you want to show you one example of that. And then we'll just look at a, quick, a map viewer so you can see that um, the content may look different, but all the functionality is the same. So these um, standard PDF maps will have the legend built in, and it's a predefined query. And then um, map viewers, um, this ADA right of way is one of the newest ones we've added. And it publishes um, ADA information and just some boundaries for reference. Or like our environmental, it includes a lot more information than we can, you know, um, fit onto the create a map page without getting confusing. So. Those are worth playing around with if you're looking for any specific content. Um, otherwise, I guess I could go on for hours. <laughs> I believe in the last webinar, I, I went so fast, we had all this extra time. I'll tell you what, save those other topics for the next time I we will. provide a webinar, because I know that folks would love to hear more about how they can leverage the TIMS system to help them. So thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. We appreciate everybody being on the webinar. I will follow up with hopefully a link to this recording and also Catherine's email information in case you have any questions or the, the general Tim's email inbox so you can have that as well for reference. So thank you everyone. Try to stay warm today. Thank you, Victoria. Good afternoon.